Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm taking a look at the XK X251 Whirlwind Quadcopter from Gearbest.com. This is a 170mm frame, so it is not quite a micro quad, and it is using 1307 brushless motors. My first impressions of this quad are good. It feels very lightweight and the arms are made out of 3K carbon fibre. On pictures it looks quite flimsy but I'll tell you now it is built like a rock. My main concern was the canopy but in person it's a solid plastic and can handle the hardest of crashes which you will see later. It weighs around 200 grams. The quad is advertised as being a 3D quadcopter, which I thought it would be the same as their XKX100, but it is not. 3D means that it can do flips, and it does not have the collective pitch style reversible props like the X100 does. I will go more into that later. Let's take a look at what you get in the box. Of course we have the quadcopter, it comes with a proprietary 7.4 volt 950 milliamp battery which is designed to fit perfect underneath. Don't worry about flight times though, I was getting 11 minute flights with the stock battery. The battery is an interesting one, it's only connected as a balance cable which connects direct into the quadcopter and also the charger. I do like this, however it means that most hobby grade chargers are not compatible with it, so you are limited to using the stock charger that can only provide about 0.7 amps, so we will have to wait longer for the battery to charge. We have the X7 transmitter, which is using the Futaba Fast protocol. There are four spare blades, and we have the charger. As I mentioned before, it uses the balance plug to charge. We are given a 1.5mm hex wrench to remove the propellers, and you are given a screwdriver for maintenance. Onto the transmitter and I'm happy to see that it has got hobby grade spring loaded gimbals. These provide so much more resolution than the Xbox style pots found on most toy grade quadcopters. I would say that this one is definitely more of a hobby grade quadcopter. The only downfall of the transmitter is that it takes 6 AA batteries, which is quite a lot. I'm sure you could mod it to add a LiPo battery, but I'm keeping this stock for this video. I'm also happy to see that you can change the control mode on this transmitter to mode 1. There's four handy screw holes on the back of the transmitter, which if turned clockwise lowers a clamp onto the throttle stick and the other releases the spring tension on the stick. And counterclockwise does the reverse, however don't unscrew them too much otherwise the screws will fall inside the transmitter case and you will have to take the whole thing apart to retrieve them. To change the mode in the software, you hold down the mode and the back button at the same time. You can then use the circle dial to navigate to the mode switch. Then press enter on the circle dial and move the dial to the left or the right to change into the desired mode. There's only mode 1 and mode 2, however you could swap the wires inside the transmitter to get mode 3 and mode 4 if you want. This transmitter is programmable, which is rare at this price point, with 10 model memories. The one thing you are going to want to do with this transmitter is ensure that the throttle curve is set to 100% for curve number 5. This is set to 75% as standard, so from the factory you aren't going to get the full punch of the throttle stick. To do that, first I need to explain the switches. The top left hand switch is the mode switch. This switch is between 6G and 3D mode. 6G mode is stability mode where the quadcopter will self level itself and 3D mode is like horizon mode in clean flight. The quad will still stabilize itself but when you get to the edge of the sticks the quad will flip or roll over. When this quadcopter was first released, 3D mode was full acro mode, but they have since backtracked on that and changed this to the horizon style mode. This can either be seen as a good or bad thing. I'm a fan of horizon mode in clean flight. It is what I use before going full acro, so if you are a beginner, the changes to this quadcopter can be seen as a good thing. If you are more experienced, then you are going to want full acro mode. However, if that is the case, then most likely you will go down the custom route anyway, as the flight controller on this quadcopter is non-adjustable. 
Both of these two modes have their own throttle and pitch curve settings. You don't need to worry about what these are. It's more specific to helicopters. However, as mentioned before, we need to amend curve 5 so that we get the full power of the motors. Both 6G and 3D switch positions have their own curve, which are enabled when the switches are flipped. So, leaving the switch in 6G mode, we can hold down the menu button and go into the throttle curve using the circle dial and pressing down on it. Scroll across to curve number 5 and ensure that it is at 100. Then, flip the switch into 3D mode and do the same. I should also point out that the quad won't go into full aerobatic mode unless the right rate switch is in the down position to give the highest rate. The up position is the low rate mode. The right shoulder button is the throttle kill switch. The only non-active switch on this transmitter is the red button to the left. Some of you will be asking, can you add FPV to this quadcopter? And yes, you can. The V686G module has the same pinout and mount underneath, which will slot in directly. Personally, for me, I will be adding the lightweight all-in-one FPV cam from microfpv.eu with a one-cell battery attached to it and some rubber bands. I will also be adding a Mobius cam, but first let's go and take it for a line-of-sight flight. The first thing anyone will notice with this quad is the amount of power that it has. Even on a 2S, those 1307 motors give so much punch, anyone would think that they were flying a 4S mini quad. The low rate mode is perfect for pottering about. I don't think I would recommend this one as a first quadcopter. I would say get a brushed micro quadcopter first and then make this your first brushless quadcopter. In the high rate mode you can really push it about, but the quadcopter will still stabilize itself. In 3D mode, the gloves are off and we can do some really nice tight rolls and flips. You have to be careful in this mode though, because if you get too far to the edge of the sticks when flying about normally, the quad will do a flip. As mentioned, this is not a full acro mode. The flips are not pre-programmed as such, but the auto level is very aggressive. So if you stop a roll when the quad is upside down, for example, it will always level itself out when you let go of the sticks. In this new 3D mode, you can't do forward flips either. You can only do backward flips. The quadcopter has an LED on the back, which changes from green to red when switching into 3D mode. I still think this is a worthy quadcopter, even though they have taken away that full acro mode. I think it's hard for RTF quadcopters to be released with a full acro mode. I imagine the amount of returns that manufacturers get is much higher due to the RTF category suiting beginners much better. Let's go and try it with FPV. The fast Futaba technology gives us a maximum range of 300 meters, which is perfect for this size. It allows me to fly FPV all around this field. The power of these motors don't even register the extra weight of the FPV gear, there is still so much power. I don't think avid mini quad flyers who tune their quadcopters to perfection will get much out of this product. As you can see from the FPV footage, the quad does wobble slightly when it recovers from a flip. You can't amend the PID settings on the flight controller, but personally I'm fine with this and I'm finding it enjoyable to fly. It's very durable, there was one point in the flight where I was adjusting my goggles while I was flying and I flew at full speed into this red bin. You can't hear it on the video but outside there was an almighty twang as the quad hit the bin. There wasn't a scratch on the quad, not even a broken prop, it is very durable. This quad has that much power, you can't even notice the extra weight when a Mobius is added into the equation, giving us so many options with this quadcopter. I did find that adding the Mobius affected the amount of wobble that the quad had when it was leveling out, however it is still very flyable and this would be such a cheap way to get into brushless quadcopters. So there you go, that is my review of the XKX251 Whirlwind Quadcopter from GearBest.com. I will put a link in the description if you wish to buy it. You can follow me on Instagram at AndyRC underscore channel for pictures and info on items that are going to be coming up on the channel. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.